I'm back, off season week eight. I know I've been away for a little bit and today is a special day because we have a guest. <laughs> Your favorite. Why is today special? Because it is, not only is it leg day and we get to train together, but it is also sushi day. That's right, so Fridays we've been doing legs together and then it's sushi every time after. So we're gonna walk you through today's workout and train together. Um, might do some updating on myself as we go, but if you followed along, I've been seven weeks post-show now, just kind of cruising along, bringing body weight ups, and from 222 came up to 235 now, and I'll get into the rest as we get through the through the workout, kind of updating like what's the plan for the future, where's my, my diet at, etc. But we'll head into the gym and get this thing kicked off. All right, so doing legs once a week still in this split. Two push sessions, two pull sessions, nothing's really changed there. The main thing moving from a post show into this push session is just bringing volume up just a touch. So side delts are getting hit first on leg day. That wasn't happening on prep, just didn't have the recovery tools to do it. So I have eight sets on my push days and then three sets a day of a wide cable lateral raise. It's a great movement to get loading with the delt fully shortened and overhead where you don't typically do it. So as a good functional aspect for shoulder health, strengthening rotator cuff function, but also loading the side delt. So uh, now total we'll have uh, 11 sets across the week as a start point. Um, and then I superset that with leg extension, single leg extension, which Renee is doing now single leg because Typically, like at least for me, it's really easy to externally rotate that foot and start kicking that foot outward. So this way we can keep the knee up and the toes up. And I can shift my knee inward just a little bit to where I can really hit a lot of the, put good bias in the lateral head. Otherwise, when my foot's externally rotating, that toe's kicking out, I get a lot in my VMO. So, of course, we want quad sweep. Not that it's gonna be an overly biased to it, but that's the idea here. So we're gonna do two work sets on our leg extension, then move on to our compound work. Yeah, so loading wise on the prime, we start with double the weight up top on the top peg and the rest in the middle peg. That way it's really hard off the bottom. So you load the stretch of the quad off the get go. And we hit some high reps off the, off the start. So 15 to 20 reps. Stay with the same weight and just let the reps drop on these two sets. But man, it'll blow the quads up before we go do our, our compound work. So I have so much to tell you all. I'll have to do multiple videos to explain it all. But we are now working with Merrick Health is a new partnership for J3U. So um, I'll leave my link down below. But man, they have such comprehensive lab work and doctors that have high level of knowledge for enhanced bodybuilding to mitigate risk. So partner with them, my coach J3U and uh, super excited for what we'll do in the future together. My labs look great, and so seven weeks post-show, just been running like a cruise dosage of gear, and now is the reason I escalate up, and why I like to do it is you'd get a lot out of just food alone post-show, keep geared low, get the most from least, you can make constant progress that way versus blasting right post-show when you've already accumulated a lot of stress load from high gear, um, high training, high cardio, and just the rigors of being in low body fat with low sleep. So you're not in the best spot to grow. You need a lot of androgen to offset all those negative aspects for recovery. So that's why we do what we do. I right, wrapped up leg extension. Renee and I are gonna go on to a pendulum squat. So today, like our compound's back braced, and then we do a split squat that's not back braced, hitting a little bit more glute. This one's first compound's very quad focused. On our other leg day, so leg day B, we flip that. So we have a lower back loaded squat, the rider squat, a little more glute focus. Then we go to the Cybex leg press for a back braced single leg movement, more quad focused. So that's how we're rotating those days since I just have one leg day to keep some variety and ch uh, change that priority each day. But on the pendulum, we'll just do two sets again here. Uh, Again, yeah, like all these leg movements, like own the eccentric and get deep with it. You can see like Renee, like we're putting in the hole, like hamstring to calf, right? 
as far as uh, diet setup goes right now, um, just added 300 kcal in on cross days. So at 3,800 calories on my train days, 3,000 on off days. I always have about that 800 calorie variance between my days, as that was what I found is giving me just like linear body weight increase or maintenance. Um, just kind of giving me insight that uh, probably about that expenditure wise on my training sessions. And uh, really not much variance between fats in those days, 50 to 60 grams. It just comes from carbohydrates. So uh, about 500 grams of carbs on train days, 340 grams of protein on, on both days. So just push food up, we'll see if that's enough to, to keep the, the ball moving here with gear coming up. Might need more, might need more sushi. I have to calm down before I even do it. I'm already like getting nervous about it. The heaviest I've done that in a long time. But fucking good. <laughs> so on that pendulum squat, two sets done. And now today we go to a prime lying leg curl. On our other day we do a city leg curl since the squat is lower back loaded. So today's like not as lower back loaded. So we have this lying leg curl here. One thing I'm doing this season is so during prep, I didn't have any cardio in towards the tail end, but I bring it back in on offset. Of course, I'm a little winded from, from I just got off my set, but a li the limitation to growing, to getting really big, is gonna be your ability to sleep, train, and eat. So there's no PD protocol that doesn't optimize those. If it starts to come detriment to one of those, then it's not right for you. You need to make the adjustment. So one thing to hold you back is cardio. Being able to train and do those sets once you get big in body weight and using big loads, you're going to drop off in work capacity. Cardiovascular wise, you'll tax out and systemically get taxed to where it affects the rest of your training. So, cardio is back in for me. I've been doing some HIT uh, training after my upper sessions. So, I'll just do a minute on the spin bike, then do the minute on battle ropes, and do that for five sets. Just hard cardio keep work capacity up like you're going to need to challenge yourself to create the adaptations to have the benefit the other two days of my cardio session are just spin bike just moderate intensity heart rate 105 to 115 and don't worry guys you're not going to lose fucking muscle training hard doing that type of cardio if anything it has great training specificity for bodybuilding one minute hard work periods it's exactly what we do in bodybuilding so it'll have good carryover to your training for uh, hypertrophy. Also, lying leg curl. So Renee's doing it. We're doing four sets here. So this is my only hamstring work for the week. They're not a priority body part, so volume is dropped back. It's enough for hard sets to get a good stimulus. We use the prime lying leg curl. Load the top peg up the most, so it's hard off. It's kind of the mid-range for the hamstring. It gets light as you come up when the hamstrings have a hard time getting short. Our last quad exercise is a front foot elevated split squat. How you execute and cue the direction of movement will put emphasis on what you want to train. So if we cued hips back, you can put more glute bias to it. If we cued knee, knee forward, we can put more quad bias to it. So that's what we're going to do for this is cue knee forward. Now we use a front foot elevation because when you elevate the front foot, your weight sits back over the hip. In other words, you have a long moment arm on the, on the knee. So now, since we have the weight over the hip, it's almost like a front squat. And we just move the knee forward and come up. Now if we had like a rear foot elevated, it shifts your weight forward, making you have to sit back to get your center of mass right. So that's why we use the front foot elevation. So you see when I do it, you'll see my knee really travel forward. I stay relatively more upright. To get back up, I push the knee back. Also, I center the foot with my center of mass. And having that foot come over more centered 
you get a little bit more stretch on your lateral. So this is the best movement where I found you can bias that lateral head of the quad just a little bit. You can't directly isolate it, of course, but this is the way we can get a little bit more quad sweep out of a out of a quad type squat. Just keep in mind, this is not a power movement. Hell, none of bodybuilding is power movement, but it's uh, it's a precision movement. So slow, very controlled, very precise. Um, it's not a lot of stability here, especially at the end of the session. So it's more of a point why you want to go real slow and eccentric. Pause in the bottom. Really take advantage of that loaded length in position, and then control press up. And it's almost almost nearly keeping a constant tension throughout the movement. So you keep the reps 10 to 15. So the intention here is to drive a little bit more metabolic stress and kind of leverage that point of fatiguing the muscle to failure versus just you know trying to speed through the rep range and just arbitrarily you know try to get more reps for the sake of more reps uh, or using a heavy load just for the sake of using heavy load. So it's a point to really entrain the intended muscle and be very intentional trying to load the quad here. Um, three sets that will wrap up this quad session. Um, so totaling up now, that is seven sets of quads, four sets of hamstrings. That's all the work. Um, I'll say I do have two other sets of hamstrings so my own back day, uh, but that's it. Um, not a lot of leg volume just at the start of this push session. All right, we made it through leg day. Renee and I are both total brain fog now, just mentally just fudged. Uh, uh, those split squats smoked us, but anyway, we made it to sushi, so we just come straight to our sushi restaurant. This is Wasabi in San Antonio, Texas. It's the go-to place, so put our order in, just wait for our food to come. This is our Friday. This is what we do. It's one of my favorite days of the week to train with Renee and hit legs and sushi. No better day than that. Um, for my update on my plans for 2024, waiting for the show schedule to come out, so it's, they moved to Olympia earlier, which I was planning on doing Legion again. That gives me like a solid year to improve. Now that the Olympia is earlier, I know I'm not gonna have as long of an off season. So kind of waiting tentatively of what's gonna come out. Might be doing the Texas Pro, then something right after that. Um, we'll just have to see, but at least I know for sure I have at least a 16, the drop, drop in plates over here, uh, a 16 to 18 week growth phase. And I am going to run a bit more of an aggressive scheme and escalate higher than I have in the past just because of moving to the open um, and also health markers are just in an excellent place and it's the, it's the, if I'm going to push it's the time to do it. So I know I don't need a ton of size, just a little bit, so it's nothing to have to like really chase the scale up or anything like that. Um, I really think if I was able, able to get five pounds of stage weight on, that would be phenomenal. So. And the last thing, and I will we'll break this more down in further videos, because I have like my full training to go through, like I'll show you my cardio, how I do it, uh, maybe even lab work too, but at least like improvement wise, how I set up, is still the things that I've always been trying to improve on, but now I'm not being 212 and having to like relocate uh, muscle basically, because with this weight cap, um, I just know I need more overall X frame. So a little bit more quad, a little bit more lat, a little bit more delt, so those are the areas that I'm putting priority on, um, which I know like what I grow easy off of is pretty low volume on legs. So just on my back days, those have really moved up um, with lats always trained first with a decent amount of volume. And then like I've already mentioned, delt volumes increased. Then also a little bit for triceps as well, because I think just your triceps can really fill in a lot of those shots that I lag in. Um, and give more width, like in your most muscular, your front lat spread, like the widest part of the arm is the tricep. And it gives a lot of 3D dimension where it ties in with the delt. So that's kind of how I designed the training for going forward. But that's it, that's all I'll tell you about today because I can just keep talking about this stuff. Um, I'll keep these videos coming out. Sushi's about to come out. I mean, is this all your sushi? It's all my, we're waiting on yours to come out. <laughs> Well, my sushi, I get no sauce to save the calories. Lame. Lame. -o. Lame. I get all the sauce for the extra calories. So without any sauce, what we do is we use soy sauce and the 
add in sweet low to our soy sauce, which makes pretend eel sauce. <laughs> Back home after sushi, so we'll wrap up our Friday and that's it. I'll keep some more updates coming for go diving into the full diet so you can see it for this off season phase and we'll hit in some to some other training sessions and maybe some lifestyle stuff like our Christmas tree's already up. <laughs> so anyway, thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you next time.